Okay, no. So we're out the front of the brock here, we're on the northern slope of the main trench and we thought we'd come and have a look at this because you can see lots and lots of walls and features and structures here. There's really a veritable riot of features and walls. So we're standing on a wall that is part of so-called Structure O, which is a kind of vaguely rectilinear building out the front door of the brock, just to the north of the entrance of the brock. Um, it's absolutely chock-a-block with rubble to some extent, but we've cleared that in certain areas to get more of the outline of the building coming through. But this building now, if we wander up here, we can actually see just emerging is the wall face on the opposite side of the inner wall face of the building. So it looks like it's a double skin wall, which is what we were hoping and kind of expecting. And what we notice is that often the village buildings that are closest in time to the period of the Brock itself are often double skinned, they're freestanding walls, they're very substantial buildings in their own right. So it's good to see that wall emerging in that way, just over here. And then as we wander in, across the piece here, we come over, you can see a series of other buildings here, structure Q is the rectilinear one over here, which does seem to be revetted into an earlier building structure are in here so they have a, a relationship over time to each other so they're indicating the sort of complexity of the biography of the settlement in that sense and the wall of structure Q <coughs> on the inside is also forming the outside wall of structure K which is a really big massive building actually out here on the northern side we previously excavated part of that building we know that about AD 300 it was reused even then as a roofless structure where metal workers had effectively moved in and set up their workshops here and produced all these beautiful pins and the like. But the, the southern end of this building was kind of eluding us and now we've got it coming up. So where Hannah is digging here, she's just over the top of the wall, the structure K on the southern side here. It's quite nice masonry running through, nice coarse masonry and then some big upright slabs that have been set on end. Um, maybe to draw attention to particular architectural portions of the building. But effectively it's forming the, the, uh, the southern wall face of Structure K. The, the northern wall face of it is way over here. Over this paving, past these floor deposits, past furnaces, and all the way out to over here is the, the inner wall face of Structure K. So from where Hannah is to where we are over here, we have a substantial, roughly square shaped uh, building, but with secondary inserts, walls that have been inserted into it at the time when metal workers took up occupation in this building. So late series of walls and features, windbreaks, <coughs> uh, shelter, little lean-tos that are just enough to give the metal workers the footings and the foundings to set up their activities and with their metal work and their iron worker in here and they're doing this elaborate jewellery making as well, copper alloy or bronze jewellery making in this area also. Yeah.